Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 3, my name is Camel, and in this video we will be running through all of the unobtainable armor pieces and sets that can slash cannot be found in Fallout 3. There are console commands, mods, glitches and bugs that will allow you to gain access to some of these items, however via normal gameplay means these items are unobtainable. For the first unobtainable piece of armor we have the all purpose science suit. With a damage resistance of 3, a value of 8, a weight of 2, an item health of 100 and effect is plus 5 to science. Location it's not applicable as this was cut from the game, just like Tony Abbott. Which is unfortunate as this would have been the perfect suit for all things science, i.e. rockets. The all-purpose science suit is physically identical to the Enclave scientist outfit. And although it was cut from the game, it does make an appearance in Fallout New Vegas. Next up we have the Apocalypse Gladiator armor with a damage resistance of 36, a value of 460, a weight of 30, an item health of 1200, effect is minus one to agility. And the second piece in the set, the Apocalypse Gladiator helmet with a damage resistance of five, a value of 70, a weight of three, an item health of 75. And both pieces of this set were in fact cut from the final version of Fallout 3. Both the Apocalypse Gladiator armor and the Apocalypse Gladiator helmet are physically identical to the metal armor and the metal helmet. However, the Apocalypse Gladiator armor has 700 more item health than the metal armor and the apocalypse gladiator helmet has 25 more item health than the metal helmet. And next up we have the army power armor with a damage resistance of 40, a value of 739, a weight of 45, an item health of 1000, effects is plus 2 to strength, minus 2 to agility and plus 10 to rance resistance. Location is not applicable as the army power armor was cut from the final version of Fallout 3. The only physical difference between the army power armor and the power armor in Fallout 3 which is the T-45D power armor, is that this version, the army power armor, has the US Army symbol bands on each shoulder. This piece of armor is the complete opposite to the leggy power armor. Next up we have the Army Recon Armor with a damage resistance of 28, a value of 105, a weight of 20, an item health of 400, effect is plus 5 to sneak, and it cannot be found in game as it was cut content for unknown reasons. And just like the Army Power Armor, the Army Recon Armor is exactly the same as normal Recon Armor except that it is marked with the US Army symbol. Next up we have Colonel Autumn's Uniform, what is he deciduous? With a damage resistance of 10, a value of 12, a weight of 3, an item health of 100, effects are plus 5 to energy weapons and plus 5 to small guns. Now you may be thinking that Colonel Autumn's uniform is obtainable in game, which it is, but this strangely enough is a reskin version sharing the skin of General Chase's overcoat. For some strange reason this reskinned version of Colonel Autumn's uniform was a cut item from Mothership Zeta. However the skin isn't entirely identical as unlike Chase's overcoat the uniform lacks a rank insignia. This is the secret albino evil twin of the standard Colonel Autumn's uniform. Next we have the commando armor with the damage resistance resistance of 24, a value of 160, a weight of 15, an item health of 150. Effects are not applicable and this is not found in game as it is cut content. Little is known about the commando armor, why it exists or why it was cut. However, it does have identical stats to the standard leather armor as well as being physically identical. Next up we have the composite recon armor with a damage resistance of 28, a value of 180, a weight of 20, an item health of 600. Effects are plus 5 to sneak. And it is another cut item from Fallout 3, however, both the composite recon armor and the composite recon helmets are cut items from Fallout 3, however in the DLC Broken Steel the composite recon helmet is in the game. So it is now obtainable, leaving this composite recon armor all alone in the dark game files of Fallout 3. The composite recon armor also has 200 more health points than the standard variant of recon armor. Next up we have the very defensive defender armor with a damage resistance of 24, a value of 160, a weight of 15, an item health of 150, effects are not applicable and once again this is cut content. This is another piece of armor that is both identical in stats and physically identical to the standard leather armor in Fallout 3. Next up we have the Enclave Shock Trooper armor with a damage resistance of 40, a value of 899, a weight of 45, an item health of 1500. Effects are plus 1 to strength, minus 1 to agility and plus 15 to rance resistance. And the other half of the set, the Enclave Shock Trooper helmet with a damage resistance of 7, a value of 150, a weight of 5, an item health of 125. Effects are minus one to charisma and plus five to rad's resistance. Both the Enclave Shock Trooper armor and the Enclave Shock Trooper helmet are cut items from Fallout 3. They are identical in appearance to the Enclave power armor and helmet, however in comparison with those their stats are nearly identical except for increased item hit points and values, as well as a decreased damage resistance on behalf of the Shock Trooper helmet. Which frankly I am quite shocked 
about. Next up we have the Explorer's Gear with a damage resistance of 12, a value of 50, a weight of 3, an item health of 120, effects are plus 2 to melee weapons and plus 2 to small guns. The Explorer's Gear is another cut item from Fallout 3 and it is identical to the Merc Troublemaker outfit, physically that is, and the only difference in terms of stats is the weight. Instead of having a weight of 8, it has a weight of 3. Next up we have General Chase's Overcoat with a damage resistance of 20, a value of 150, a weight of 4, an item health of 250, effects are plus 1 to Charisma, plus 10 to Small guns and plus five to speech. And General Chase's overcoat can be seen being worn by General Chase during the Operation Anchorage simulation. General Chase's overcoat is a reskinned version of the standard Colonel Autumn's uniform. However, as you can see, it has been winterized just like everything else in the Operation Anchorage DLC. There is an obtainable version of General Chase's overcoat in the Mothership Zeta DLC. However, it is reskinned with the winterized combat armor skin. So please don't get these two mutated twins confused. Next up, we have General Jingwei's uniform with a damage resistance of 25, a value of 10, a weight of 2, item health of 999,100, effects are not applicable. And the other half of the set is the Chinese General Hat with a damage resistance of 6, a value of 6, a weight of 1, an item health of 99,915, and effects are not applicable. Both of these pieces can be seen being worn by General Jingwei in the Operation Anchorage simulation. The uniform is a reskin version of the dirty Chinese jumpsuit from the main game and offers a significantly higher damage resistance than both the winterized or standard Chinese jumpsuits. However, like the Winterized jumpsuit, it lacks any kind of bonus. It also has the best weight to damage resistance ratio, making it the juiciest armor set in the game. Next up, we have Hand Me Down Raider Armor with a damage resistance of 16, a value of 180, a weight of 15, and item health of 100. Effects are not applicable. The Hand Me Down Raider Armor is visually identical with the Raider Sadist Armor. Apart from that, it's exactly the same, and in fact, pretty boring. Next up, we have the Highway Scar Armor, otherwise known as the Post Car Crash. With a damage resistance of 16, a value of 180, a weight of 15, and item health of 100. Effects are not applicable. This was cut from the final version of Fallout 3, and the Highway Scar Armor is visually identical with the Raider Blastmaster armor. Once again, it is pretty much exactly the same. Next we have Lions' Pride Recon armor with a damage resistance of 28, a value of 105, a weight of 20, and item health of 400. Effect is plus 5 to sneak. The Lions' Pride Recon armor was cut from the game. Just like your younger siblings when you play Monopoly. In terms of stats, the Lions' Pride Recon armor is exactly the same as the normal Recon armor. However, physically, the only difference is the Lions' Pride simple is on this Lions' Pride Recon Armor. Next up we have the Outcast Recon Armor with a damage resistance of 28, a value of 180, a weight of 20, an item health of 400, effect is plus 5 to sneak. And the other half of the set is the Outcast Recon Armor Helmet with a damage resistance of 4, a value of 40, a weight of 3, an item health of 40, effect is plus 1 to perception. And both pieces of this set were cut from the game. The Outcast Recon Armor is, like the name suggests, a Brotherhood Outcast version of the Recon Armor. It has the Outcast's coloration and the armor is more valuable and the helmet gives plus one to perception, unlike the standard recon helmet. So they are a little bit better, and it is a shame they were cut, or should I say they were outcast from the game. Oh, hello! Next, we have the pink power armor with the damage resistance of who knows? In fact, all of the stats are who the hell knows? Now, the pink power armor does not exist in the game or as an unused item in the GEC. However, the texture does exist in the game files. In appearance, as you can see, it has a worn pink paint job covering the entirety of the armor, with the white outline of a heart on the chest. It's so cute! Next up, we have the Road Rascal Leather Armor with a damage resistance of 24, a value of 160, a weight of 15, an item health of 150, effects are not applicable, and location is not applicable as it was cut from the final version of Fallout 3. The Road Rascal Leather Armor is identical in stats and also identical physically to the standard leather armor found in Fallout 3. Except this one's up to no good. Ah, next we have Robothor Armor with a damage resistance of 40, a value of 820, a weight of 45, an item health of 3000, effects are plus 1 to strength, minus 1 to agility, and plus 15 to rad's resistance. And the second half to the set is the Robothor Helmet with a damage resistance of 8, a value of 120, a weight of 5, an item health of 125, effects are minus 1 to charisma, and plus 5 to rad's resistance. Both pieces of this Robothor armor set were cut from the final version of Fallout 3. Little is known about Robothor armor and the Robothor helmets. While it looks the same as Tesla armor, its stats are more closely resembling the Enclave power armor stats. Although the Robothor armor, unlike any other piece of power armor, has a whopping 3000 item health, which is double the item health of the Tesla armor. It's massive! 
Next up we have the Sharp Dressed Raider's Armor, with a damage resistance of 16, a value of 180, a weight of 15, and item health of 100. Effects are plus 1 to charisma and plus 10 to speech. Hmm, I must be wearing this. And once again it was a cut item from Fallout 3. The Sharp Dressed Raider's Armor is identical, physically, to the Raider Pain Spike Armor. Next we have the Shell Shocked Combat Armor with a damage resistance of 32, a value of 390, a weight of 25, and item health of 400. Effects are not applicable. And the second half to the set, the Shell Shocked Combat Helmets with a damage resistance of 5, a value of 50, a weight of 3, and item health of 50. Effects are not applicable. And both the Shell Shocked Combat Armor and the Shell Shocked Combat Helmets are both cut items from Fallout 3. Both pieces of this Shell Shocked Combat set are also identical in stats to the Standard Combat Armor and the Standard Combat Helmet. Little is known as to why these were cut or why they were even made in the first place. They must have been a hard shell. Next we have the Sim Regen Armor with a damage resistance of 32, a value of 390, a weight of 25, an item health of 400. The effects are quite interesting. It has the ability to restore the wearer's health and repairs damaged limbs and would have actually been super cool to see in game. And as I'm sure you've gathered by this point, the location is not applicable as this is cut content from the Operation Anchorage DLC. Hopefully this piece of armor regenerates into Fallout 4. Next up we have the Stealth Recon Armor with a damage resistance of 28, a value of 105, weight is 20, the item health is 400, effects are plus 5 to sneak, and it has the ability to generate a stealth field when crouched, just like the Chinese Stealth Armor. And the second piece of the set is the Stealth Recon Helmet, with a damage resistance of 4, a value of 40, a weight of 3, item health of 40, effects are not applicable, and both pieces of this set were cut from the final version of the DLC Operation Anchorage. Both the armor and the helmets are identical in stats apart from the armor of course having the ability to generate a stealth field. Visually they share the skin with the Outcast's recon armor which was also cut. Which is a damn shame because this is basically the Daedric version of recon armor. Next up we have the Tesla Resonance Armor with a damage resistance of 43, a value of 820, a weight of 45, an item health of 1500. Effects are plus 10 to energy weapons and plus 20 to rads resistance. And unfortunately the Tesla Resonance Armor was cut from the final version of the Broken Steel DLC. Both physically and in terms of stats, the Tesla Resonance Armor is identical to the Tesla Armor. However, I like this version better, for some reason it just resonates with me. Next we have the Wastelander's Gear with a damage resistance resistance of 12, a value of 50, a weight of 2, an item health of 120 effects are plus 2 to melee weapons and plus 2 to small guns. Once again, this is a cut item from Fallout 3. The Wastelander's gear is identical to the Merc Troublemaker outfit except in terms of stats, it's weight. Instead of having a weight of 8, it has a weight of 2. The eating disorder of Merc outfits. Next we have the Winterized Combat Armor, with a damage resistance of 32, a value of 390, a weight of 25, an item health of 400. Effects are not applicable, as there are none. And the other half of the set, the Winterized Combat Helmet, with a damage resistance of 5, a value of 50, a weight of 3, an item health of 50. Effects are not applicable, and both pieces of this set can be seen being used by troops in the Operation Anchorage simulation, which of course is in the Operation Anchorage DLC. The Winterized Combat Armor and the Winterized Combat Helmet are fully reskinned versions of the combat armor. As you can see, they have been winterized and have been made out of greys and whites. As also, the helmet has this balaclava across the face to protect the wearer from the harsh, wintry wastelands. Two more to go. We've also got the winterized combat helmet with no balaclava over the face, with a damage resistance of 5, a value of 50, a weight of 3, an item health of 50, effects not applicable. However, this piece is actually cut content and you do not see it at all in the simulation in the Operation Anchorage DLC. And as you can see, it is again a reskin version of the combat helmet that has been winterized, made white and grey, and as you can see, as the name suggests, it does not have a balaclava over the face, unlike the previous helmet we just covered. And lastly, we have something pretty cool, the Test Fill Snow Helmet. With a damage resistance of 5, a value of 50, a weight of 3, an item health of 50, effects are not applicable, and this, believe it or not, is actually cut content from the Operation Anchorage DLC. Now in your Pip-Boy, this will actually come up as a winterized combat helmet, or a combat helmet, however the ID name is Test Test Fill Snow Helmet. And as you can see, it appears as a snowman's head turned on its side for whatever reason. It is huge and out of proportion, not really seeming like it was meant to ever be an actual helmet or headpiece, and your character's hair will also clip through the top of the helmet, or the side of the helmet which is now the top, whichever way you want to look at the universe. But this is no headpiece for the wasteland as it will melt. As cool as this is, it was probably never meant to go in the final version of Fallout 3, I mean there's just no way.
That does conclude the video on unobtainable armor that can slash cannot be found in Fallout 3 and its respective DLCs. I do hope you thoroughly enjoyed this video and I do hope that you got to see some of the armor that you never would have seen and you never knew existed. As you can see on screen, there are other videos in this series, so please feel free to check those out. I think you'll really enjoy them. For those of you on the mobile, the links will be in the description as well. Links to Twitter and Facebook will also be in the description. Please feel free to check those out. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know your favorite item in this video. You absolutely must to share this video amongst your fellow vault dwellers and as always if you did enjoy this video and you would like to see videos similar to this one please subscribe it helps me know that people are interested in these kind of videos and in the long run will result in more of these kind of videos and with that said i would like to thank you yes you very much for watching and i will see you very very shortly in the next video i'll see you there goodbye